All right, so in the previous video, we made this heart shape fire effects with a cartoonish look. And based on this same process, I made all the variation that I wanted to share with you. So this video, just to keep it simple, we're gonna focus on the earth uh, rocky shape and I'm gonna skip the modeling part and I'm gonna skip also the shading and the rendering. All right, so in the same project, I'm gonna make a new geometry node and I'm gonna import through a object merge the version of the heart that I did before. So I can make some modification and make it look like a rock, like a rock shape. All right, so we're gonna start by subdividing the heart. Uh, we don't need like too many subdivisions. Then scatter some points. In the scatter, we're gonna change the, the amount of point to a lower number, like 10, for example. And we're gonna click on scatter on voxel independently. Then we're gonna use a Voronoi fracture to use those points and, and fracture the heart shape. In the Voronoi fracture, we're not gonna change too many things. I just changed the cut plane offset to kind of separate the pieces. And then in the scatter, I remove the relaxed iteration. So there is like, it looks more organic, like different shapes and, and size. Then uh, try the global C and try to find a pattern that you like. This will like make random variations of the shapes. Then using a poly bevel, we're gonna break this flat shape from the pieces by using ignore flat edge. And we're gonna change the distance so, you know, it kind of breaks the the small pieces and they makes it look more like a rock and also I feel like you get some sort of like stylized look so try to find something that you like here I found that a number around 0 0.04 0 0.05 is enough for the distance now next same as we did in the previous tutorial we're gonna uh, we're gonna use a BDB from polygon to convert our mesh into BDB and I think a number around 0 0.01, 0 0.002 is enough. You get enough details. You will have to play around with this number because when you start smoothing this BDB and using the BDB reshape, you will, you will have to try to find a balance between all of these nodes. Right now we have the BDB from Polygon, BDB Smooth, SDF, BDB Reshape. And the BDB Reshape, we're gonna use it two times, one for the dialect and the second one is for the hero. So again, don't, don't copy paste my uh, values. Try to find your own. The idea here is that you practice and find a balance between the reshapes and the smooth because your model probably will be different than mine and if you just copy paste you might find some artifacts that you actually want to avoid as a general rule just try to avoid having spaces in between the the, the pieces and you can use the reshape to dilate more or you can also always go back to the poly bevel and change the distance so they merge try to get them as much merge as possible but at the same time trying to, to try to keep the the details of the different uh, pieces so that you you have the rock shape when you convert it back into polygons as you can see now so when you're done you think you are in the right place uh, just make a remesh i like to remesh i prefer having the triangulated uh, mesh I think for the sake of the of the whole process, what I will do next is to, well, first create a null to set the out and then uh, an output uh, Alembic. So export the new mesh with the animation as an Alembic. So it's much easier to work later in the simulation to avoid having to calculate the VDB all the time per frame on top of the simulation. Uh, 
right now as it is I mean you could easily just go directly to the render and shading and just you know have it as it is but uh, just for the fun I decided to make a small simulation to emit some small rocks out of the the main shape so to start with we're gonna import our export our alembic and as you can see there is not inf there's no information on it so we need to unpack the alembic every time we work with alembic we need to use an unpack so we can get the geometry back now what i want to do here for the particle emission is to cut the heart by half and emit the particle from the bottom because i want to avoid having the particle being emitted from the top of the heart i think it looks looks much better if they are emitted from the bottom but that's up to you if you want to take the whole heart or just a part of it as i'm, I'm doing right now and same as before we're going to scatter some points out of this uh, new shape that this new cut the same values same uh, same options and then we're going to create a dot network but before we create, we go into the dot network. Let's let's create a collision source because we want to use the the heart as a collider, so the particle bounces from the heart. The collision source is actually very useful. It's an easy way to set up your geometry as a collider for a simulation. The collision source have two outputs. One is the geometry, and the second one is a VDB of the input these two we will use them inside of the dot network for the static object and you can make the collision work with the geometry or the volume of the geometry in our case we're gonna use the volume so change the voxel size to a low number so we can get some of these details into the simulation Inside of the dot network, we start by creating the basic node. So that will be the gravity, a pop solver, a pop object, and the pop source. Let's connect all of them. The gravity to the pop solver, the pop object to the first input, and the pop source in the last input. We're not going to change anything in the pop up yet. Everything remains the same. We do going to change in the pop source, the emission type to point and the geometry source to first context geometry. If you play with, you will have some particles running. Let's also not forget the collider. So with the static objects and a merge, we bring the collision source that we just created. In the sub path, we're gonna point at the geo rock heart, so the rock, the geometry output, and the collision detection will be use volume collision, and the mode will be volume sample. Then in the proxy volume, that's where we're gonna point at the VDB output from the collision source. And if you click in collision guy, you can see the how detailed is the collider. Remember to check on use the forming geometry because this will this is what import the geom the animation of the geometry. All right, I'm gonna disable the simulation where the little brain button is, and I'm going to check where the heartbeat animation is playing. In my geometry like where and how long the heartbeat animation lasts and in your case it might be different maybe you made a very fast heartbeat or maybe maybe it's very slow so I just want you to understand what am I doing here as I fast forward this part of the video just in case this is maybe a little bit confusing for you I'm gonna explain it again all I'm doing is just setting a keyframe in the constant activation from 0 to 1 and from 1 to 0. In between the, the ones, I'm going to leave some space, a couple of frames to uh, let the emission take place. And as you can see, I also changed the constant birth rate. I took the number down to 20, which I think is a good number for just a small emission of particles. Okay, so 
this is what I'm doing. And once I have like one set of keyframe, I'm going to copy those and paste it across the other heartbeat animations. Now that we have the simulation, we need to copy some geometry to those points, to those particles. And to do this, we're going to make a copy to points. The second input will go to the simulation. So to the dub network and the first input, that's where we're going to put the, the geometry. And this geometry, we will use a sphere for this. And the sphere is gonna be low poly, so it's gonna be around five to five. And we're gonna deform this geometry, this sphere, by using an attribute box. All we do here is applying a turbulent noise to those points, to the position of the points of the sphere. And just play around with the frequency, the amplitude, the roughness, until you get a shape that you like. So now that we have our geometry ready, we put it into the first input of the copy two points and you will notice that the geometry has been like scattered across the heart so there is a lot of them and even if you scale it down it will like basically take the shape of the heart the reason is because our dub network is using our static object and we need to change this in the object merge tab and tell the dub network that we only want the pop object, which is our particle simulation. Now you have some small rocks, copy to the particle simulation. All right, now we have the most important, uh, we have the particle simulation, the rock shape in the heart, and all that's left to do is catch your simulation, organize your project so you have in a separate geometry all the, the separate elements, apply the materials, play with the color and find something that you like and render using Mantra. So this is it. I hope you have uh, managed to the end of the video and you enjoy making this. So see you in the next video.